So chapter one is about the fundamentals of the uh, financial accounting theory. Uh, so it's quite interesting recently, uh, they start emphasizing the importance of the accounting theory. Before you learn about, you know, uh, general entries, right? All these calculations. The fundamental question is why do I have to do it? And why do I have to do it this way, right? So here, you are at the intermediate financial accounting level, you're gonna learn about uh, the fundamental accounting theories, why we are doing things in certain ways, okay? So you're gonna find uh, quite a bit of difference that uh, the first three chapters are mostly a theory, are mostly uh, conceptual stuff, right? Maybe you can call it the fluffy stuff. Uh, it will, you wanna see general entries until chapter four, okay? So for those of you who like making general entries, um, I promise you we are going to do general entries for the uh, chapters four to 10. But for the first three chapters, it's gonna be mostly focusing on theory and the conceptuals. And this is very important. It's gonna help you to understand why we do things in a certain way, okay? So in this chapter, we are going to talk about the demand and the supply of accounting information, okay? Accounting information. The supply and the demand of the accounting information. So if you have learned economics, right? They talk about the supply and demand of goods, right? Uh, but here, you know, accounting information is kind of a public good. Uh, we are going to talk about the concept of the information asymmetry, okay? So you know something, uh, I, you don't know something I know, right? things like that, so information asymmetry. And uh, there are two types of information asymmetry, adverse selection and moral hazard. Okay, we're gonna talk about uh, what are they, definition, and we're gonna go through some examples. And we are going to talk about how we're gonna deal with these problems. So information asymmetry, um, you know, uh, could be a negative thing, and how the information suppliers can um, deal with this issue, okay? To address the issues of adverse selection and moral hazard. So that will be the focus of this chapter. If we have time, we are going to talk about uh, earnings management, okay? So the earnings numbers reported on the financial reports are not necessarily uh, the true reflections of the economic activities. You know, the managers could exaggerate, right, the income. The managers could downplay the liabilities, right? Or for whatever reason, right, they may have. So we, we can talk about the earnings management. Okay? Maybe this is a new concept for you. Okay. Uh, the demand and supply of accounting information. So I started with this NBA basketball player. He's a star. Um, for those of you who are basketball fans, James Harden, okay? Uh, you can see a lot of uh, his uh, uh, information, birth date, height, um, you know, current team, and the reward he received, okay? So, um, you know, he, he was the uh, Adidas shoes brand ambassador. So in 2015, Okay, he signed a contract for 14, uh, 14, 13 years. That was $200 million, right? So then your question is, why his, you know, how, how, how do people know he worth, is worthy of the $200 million, right? Do you think because he has a, a long, big beard, right? That, that's, <laughs> that's worth, probably not, right? So what, what is that? Okay, so, um, so then, it's about his information, right? His performance information, um, all these stats, right? The shooting percentage for the three points, for the field goals, field points, you know, the, the NBA, they, are, they have the, 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 all these stats. Uh, so then for those, uh, for those companies, they would look into this. Uh, who is the star? Who is the, uh, you know, the, the, the top performers? Who has lots of fans, followers? So they want to sign a contract with them, right? So it's important the MBA supply this information, okay? And those companies, Adidas, would, would look for these information for them to make an important decision, 
right? That's a $200 million decision. Uh, so the for accounting is the same idea, right? So accounting um, is actually uh, a production transmissions of information about the enterprise, right? So the previous example is about NBA basketball star. But now the information is really about the enterprise. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the, the information uh, provider has to communicate these informations to those people who need this information. Okay, so uh, who might be the supplier? Who might be the, um, the, those parties demanding this information? So for example, okay, so I'm a company, I want to go for the public, right? I need to raise a lot of capitals from investors. Okay, so then, you know, I want to say my company is, you know, the best company on earth, okay? Um, I have to communicate my performance, my accounting information, my earnings, right? And the investor wants to see, and they want to compare companies or these companies, okay? So, um, and then they will make a decision which companies they are going to invest, okay? So you can see that there's the, demand for accounting information on the investor side. And for the companies, if they want to raise, raise capitals from the investors, if they want other, the investors to buy their shares, they have to provide the accounting information, right? So you have learned about earnings, right? From the income statement, uh, earnings per share, right? Those, all those informations, are important information for the investors to make decisions. Here is the uh, consolidated balance sheet, right? The statement of financial position for Apple in 2019 and 2018, right? So you can see this is a balance sheet, but it's information, right? It's all information. Um, so it tells, uh, for particularly, uh, they tell us the total eyesight, right? For the total eyesight for the uh, Apple in the two years. Uh, so the investor will be able to make a judgment Okay, they will be like, okay, in 2018, the, uh, in 2018, the, let me see here, the, the total eyesight is 365, 725, okay? And in 2019, right, it's going down, right? This is the information showing us a trend, right? Showing us a trend. Sorry, did you see me uh, using a uh, red, red marker to uh, circling the two numbers? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. My, my, again, my camera froze, but I'm hoping that my, uh, my, my, uh, my screen is okay. Okay, good. So you can see that um, comparison, the trend will tell a lot of things, right? What happened to Apple in 2019? Things like that, right? So the supply and demand for information. There are three branches, like, Basic, basic categories, financial reporting, you are providing information to the external parties, could be the uh, investors, right? They can buy your shares, could be the lenders, who is going, going to give you a loan, uh, could be your employees, who is making decisions whether they're gonna, uh, gonna be hired by you, right? Or the uh, high profile employees, they have to decide which company they're gonna work for, right? Okay, so, and uh, for your uh, suppliers, right? Um, you know, how come Walmart has so much power in terms of price negotiations with the suppliers, right? Because the suppliers know, um, you know, the, the, the powerful role they have in the market, right? It's all reflected in their sales, right? The volumes of the sales. So all these financial reportings um, that providing information to external parties, right? this is financial accounting. For reportings within the enterprise, that's managerial reporting. So if you have taken uh, managerial accounting, right, in 2400 at the OPL, uh, you learned about all these cost accountings, right? What's the cost components, direct materials, direct laborers, overheads, all those kind of fun stuff. Um, so basically, the managers want to know how much it's going to cost me to produce this item, right? And uh, what's, the, what's the amount of overhead? How can I make it cheaper, right? How can I make it more efficient? So all this information, okay, will be useful to the managers, right? To the CEOs, board of directors to make important decisions. 
So these are managerial accounting, okay? And then of course, taxations, right? Uh, you know, the government wants to know, okay, how much money you should pay us, right? CRA is, is gonna collect money from all these enterprises, right? You have to report the taxable income, right? So that's kind of the basic roles. Uh, now for this course, we are doing, uh, we are still doing financial accounting. So we are focusing on providing information to external parties, okay? If you have any questions, just uh, stop me, okay? So, um, okay, so if, uh, you know, if uh, a provider providing apples, the other provider providing orange, right? Okay, how can you compare apples with orange? You have to compare apples to apples, right? Okay, so when the investor is trying to decide, okay, which two companies, A or B, actually invest, okay? If A providing accounting information one way, okay, and B is another way. So if A is speaking in Dutch, right, and if B is speaking in uh, Germany, right, how can I compare the two uh, companies, right? I can't, right? I can compare only if they speak the same language, right? Only I can only compare and evaluate if they are using the same standard, they are using the, the same tool, right? the same measurement, uh, so that's how I compare them. So um, what we are using a common, generally accepted accounting principles, it's called a gap, right? So this is kind of the ruler. Uh, so the companies, especially the public companies, we have to use gap, okay? So give the, give the investors, the external parties, users a chance to compare apples with apples, right? Okay, so the, uh, this gap is actually a broad principles and conventions of general accounting uh, applications. Okay, so this is why we do we we do things certain ways. Okay, these gaps is guiding the CPAs, the professionals, the institutions to generate accounting standard in certain ways that we are learning, we are following. There are two uh, gaps we are going to uh, cover mostly in this course, IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standard, and ISB, Accounting Standards for Private Enterprise, okay? So we are going to cover IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, and ISB, Accounting Standard for Private Enterprises. Sorry, uh, this is Paul. I just have a quick question. Yeah. Um, so if you have a company that follows GAAP and a company that follows IFRS or ASPE, you, could you still compare them or it'd be limited? Um, so you, you are not able to compare them directly. So that's why for, uh, for companies that who they pick one standard, there's a reason. For example, publicly listed companies, um, they have stocks uh, traded in the stock market, they have to adopt IFRS, okay? So for investors, they are only comparing these public companies, and these public companies, they all use IFRS. Okay, thanks. But for those uh, private companies, you know, in Canada, I think 80% of our business is based on uh, small and media enterprises that are run by families, right? By uh, entrepreneurs. So they don't have to use IFRS because the amount of users of their information is very limited. So probably only the, the bankers will use their information, right? Because they do not go to the stock market to raise capital, right? So in that way, it's a cost of benefit. Uh, the efforts is very costly, right? Uh, but the benefit is um, they are more uh, responsible for millions of users, investors. There's a benefit for going through the costly process of using efforts, right? Because the information will be used by millions of users. Uh, for those small and medium-sized enterprise companies, um, the, the cost of using efforts cannot be justified by the users because they may only have one user. Like they only get loans from the bank, right? That's why the accounting standard allowing them to use ISB, so accounting standard for private enterprise. So they are, they do not, we do not compare them uh, directly, right? 
uh, for these small companies, if they decide, if they are seeing in future they are going for public, okay, um, they started with small, but maybe they're growing, and eventually they want to go public. So then they may choose to use efforts. They don't have to. They don't have to, but they want to increase their comparability with other public companies. So they may choose to use efforts. May I ask a question? Yes, Arlene. So yeah. I understand that uh, farming and fishing operations can use cash basis of cash basis accounting. Yes. Yeah? So here in Alberta, because there are a lot of farming operations, so do they use cash basis accounting or when you audit them, you know, they, they have to use, uh, they are already using, uh, you know, non-cash basis? Yeah, very good question. I think uh, for farming business, they are using uh, cash-based accounting. Um, so there are special regulations for the farming business, right? So for example, a lot of practicing CPAs, um, they, if they have never worked on a farming client, they would decline any farmers to use their service because it's uh, more complicated. They have different farmers programs. And uh, like you said, Part of that is because uh, they are using cash-based accounting for certain uh, certain transactions. Um, so that's why, um, you know, um, so the, the, the idea is the cash-based accounting is not gap, okay? It's not gap. Um, the farmers, they use this non-gap standard. The reason why it's successful because uh, they are mostly for income tax purpose. So they are, uh, generate financial reporting for mostly for uh, income tax purpose. So they uh, determine how much taxable income would be, okay? And, uh, and you know that uh, for income tax purpose, it's, it's actually a partial modified cash-based cash -based accounting, okay, for taxation, okay? And, um, and also for uh, bank loans, okay, for the farmers, for bank loans, and then um, they, are, they will be okay, they understand. This is a, a cash business. But the idea is it's really important just to know that IFRS and uh, SB, they, they are gap, and cash based accounting is not gap. Okay. Okay, so at the intermediate level, uh, from uh, 3100 level, we are trying to understand why, right? We are trying to ask a deeper question why? Right. So, um, and then as we go through these chapters, uh, you would see how the chapter, uh, chapters for one, two, three, this theory based knowledge is going to help you understand why we do certain things a certain way for chapters four to ten. Okay. okay so, uh, accounting regulatory agencies. Okay. Uh, so we want to understand a little bit about the institutional environment. So uh, there are different uh, uh, standard board, okay? So for the uh, US gap, okay? So the, uh, the, uh, the board is called the uh, uh, Financial Accounting Standard Board, okay? That's in US. The so US gap is different from uh, efforts. And then for the International uh, Accounting Standard Board, that's in London, England. Okay, so this board is responsible for efforts, which we are studying in this course. And then in Canada, we have a county standard board. Okay, that's in Canada. Uh, but